72 lives lost, 72 families destroyed. 72 reasons to make sure another tragedy like Grenfell cannot happen again. It's been five years since the fire, but for the bereaved and survivors, that time has stood still. The pain in this community is everywhere. It's still written on the walls, on the railings, on the faces of those trying to fight on. Hanan Wahabi survived the fire that night. Her brother, Abdulaziz, and his family did not. You can see the impact, obviously. They have cleaned it. Mm -hmm. My brother was wearing this when he died. Uh, so I have this in my bedroom. You keep it next to you? Yeah, yeah. Hanan has little left from her flat or her brothers, just memories. They were a loving family. Um, there was a lot of laughter, a lot of joking. <laughs> A lot of dry humour in that household there was. <laughs> they held onto both cultures, the British culture and the Moroccan culture, you know. You'd go in and you'd see the, you'd see like a British flag, British flag and then you'd see like, you know, uh, Moroccan ceramics in the house. It was, it was, you know, it was, mm -hmm. yeah, it was nice to see that. After the fire, Hanan and her two children were left to live in one hotel room for 18 months. I just remember, as a parent, you want to protect the children from seeing, um, you know, your difficulties and your challenges. There was no protecting them from that. Um, I just remember collapsing um, constantly. I got to the point where I would lock myself in the bathroom just so my children wouldn't see. But it didn't mean they couldn't hear. She now has somewhere to live, but she doesn't call it home. Grenfell was my home and I still see that as my home. I mean, there are times when I might be driving and I forget that Grenfell happened and it's like you're in mid days and I'm driving towards the tower. And then I'm like, oh my God, where are you going? You don't live there anymore. I miss everything about Grenfell Tower. Now, it just feels very lonely. It feel, I feel very, very, very lonely. For comfort and support, Hanan doesn't go far. Down the street is Manira Mahmoud. She also survived the fire. She also lost someone she loved. Manira and Hanan don't talk about what happened on the 14th of June, 2017. They don't need to. Mentally, you know. I think I didn't believe in mental illness or mental disturbance, trauma, stress, depression. All of us are victims of it. Missing someone that, you know, the children are calling mum, auntie. It's just painful. As the years have gone on, rather than starting to heal, many people here have told me that their trauma is getting worse, that they feel weaker and more exhausted with a continued fight for answers and for justice. What's hard for the bereaved is that it feels like nothing has changed yet everything in their lives has. I am not who I am, who I was before Grenfell. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I worked for over 20 years in education in September of 2017, even though my family hadn't all been found at that point. I went back to work. Uh, and not because I was able to perform my job adequately. That was the only place that was the same for me. That was my safe place. But last year, Hanan made the decision to leave the job she loved. It was too much. Yes, we smile, we may laugh, we may joke. But the only way we do that is to whack on plasters in every single hole that we have. We have wounds, our wounds are massive. We cover them, but we can only cover them for, for, for just for a brief period. And then literally when those doors close, you don't see us. We are broken. We all know how the Grenfell fire started. What's unclear is how this will all end. The ongoing public inquiry has revealed a catalogue of failures, yet not one person has been charged with a crime. 
And it's this absence of accountability that five years on is still at the heart of the trauma here. Charlotte Lomas, Sky News.